have what we call waterfall rooms. These are heat sensitive. The hotter the water gets in the radiator, the more it opens and then it closes when it moves. Oh. Okay. Wow. You have a 1925 Roadster with the rumble seat, and this is how today's modern day trunk got named the trunk because you carried your trunk around with you in those days. I wonder why they call it the boot. The boot? Yeah. Because when you put it over here, you had a cover that went over it, like you would put a boot on it. Oh, okay? Gotcha. To protect it. And in England, in Europe, and Australia, these are not called rumble seats. These are called dicky seats. I have no idea why. <laughs> I've been asking that question. I'm going to have to Google it and find out why they call this a dicky seat. Yeah. I know why they call it a rumble seat in America. But <laughs> this is another 1929 Dietrich dual cap. Front headlamp still turned with the steering wheel. And the dual cap is this part right here. Chauffeur drives you around with the top down. This windshield falls forward. This raises up. You slide yourself in here to put it back up, and you don't get wind and dust on you when you're all beautifully dressed up in 1929. The original owner of this car was a president of the Smiths Brewing Company in 1929. Gary Cooper owned a car exactly like this. And they would always put your initials on the car if you wanted your initials on it. Construction on the inside of the door is all wood. Okay. It's a termite thing. <laughs> 1932 shovel nose. Remember the toy? Yeah. Here's the shovel nose. Three major mistakes were made by the Packard at that time. In this time, they're coming out of the Depression and they want everybody to own a Packard. So they lowered the selling price from three, four, five thousand dollars to seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. Mistake number one. Mistake number two was it cost them 800 more to make the car than what they sold it for. No way. And the third mistake was the rich man. He always owned a Packard and drove it around town showing that I have money and you're the, the guys beneath me, mm -hmm. you know? But suddenly, now, suddenly, you as the working class or the middle class can own just as beautiful a car as he could for half the price he was used to paying. So now he says, the hell with Packard, he goes elsewhere. Yes. Okay? 1,200 of these were made. And this is one of five left in existence. And this is a very unique trunk. I cannot open it. It is all original. It has never been restored. But this has a unique feature. The lid opens up this way. Yes. The front opens no. down. And it has individual suitcases made to fit inside. So instead of having to take the whole trunk, all you do is take the suitcases, including the hat box, out, pack it up, and then put it back and go down. That's neat. 1939 Victoria. Only 11 were made. V12 engine. 0 to 60 in 20 seconds. This one came out of Hollywood, California. We cannot prove the story. All we can do is continue the story, which makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. Clark Gable supposedly rode this car in a parade and used it to advertise Packard in Hollywood. Oh, good call. Now the car that we do know it belongs to is the one next to it. You all eat cornflakes or cereal in the morning? Sometimes. How about post cereal? No. Raisin Bran. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The owner of this car is Margie Merriweather Post. She's the heiress of post cereal. Yes. Okay. And this is her personal limousine that we acquired. This car in 1938 was worth more than the average three bedroom home. $8,300 in 1938. The average house you could buy was around five grand for a three bedroom home. Please, I'll give you a moment. Look inside. Gotta look at the back. You talk about luxury. Mama. Yes. 